Welcome everybody today to Turning Point. It's so good to be with you guys on this Memorial Day weekend. Thank you so much for coming and making Turning Point a part of your weekend as we celebrate Memorial Day. And we do uh, thank God for all of the men and women who serve our great country. And on this day, you know, we think it only proper that we take just a moment here to remember and recognize uh, the, the people who gave their lives so that we can enjoy our freedom uh, for our families and for generations to come. And so before we get into the message today, uh, I wanted to just take a moment and just respect and remember the memory of those lives who were given for our great country. So if you would, just for a moment, would you join me in a moment of silence as we honor those great heroes? Lord, we thank you so much for your, your grace, and God, today we remember uh, those great heroes who laid it all out, gave it all. They laid down their life to defend our freedom and our country and our families, and so today, God, we honor their bravery, their courage, and we pray comfort upon their families and their memory today. May, may they be honored, and may you be glorified, uh, and we ask today, God, as we get ready to read the word and dig into your word, Lord, that you'll give us ears to hear, eyes to see, to receive your word, God, that it would bring life and light, because it's a light to our path and a lamp to our feet. We thank you for showing us the way to life. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're also going to watch a short video to remind us of this very important holiday weekend. Watch this. And I'll... Let's put our hands together for those great heroes today. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to get started on part two of our series called Just Saying, uh, The Power of Words. Last week, we talked about the power of God's Word. and Hopefully, it inspired you to begin to read God's Word daily. We have a soap devotional Bible reading plan that you can get on our app, our website, or in the foyer. There's a bookmark, but we're getting into God's Word because His Word brings life, and it's full of power to transform, to bring faith, and to bring healing to our life. You know, I thought about when you were growing up, did you ever hear the phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Maybe you even said that as a grade school kid, thinking that was just the comeback, right? Like, ah. But if you found that philosophy to be inaccurate, that, um, you know, not only do sticks and stones break bones, but words do hurt. And it's because words are very powerful. And God's word shows us exactly uh, what words have the power to do. And in Proverbs 18, the wisest man of the Old Testament, King Solomon, by the power of the Holy Spirit, scribed these in Proverbs 18. I'm going to jump up to verse 20. It says this. From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied with the yield of his lips. Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. 
Now, what, what is that saying? It's talking about fruit and yielding. What, what does it mean? It means that our words um, are, are impacted uh, by, our li- by our words. Our words impact our lives. Let me say it like this. The quality of our lives is directly connected to the words we speak. The words we speak have life and death. God wants us to speak life. And so we're learning how to speak life because there's so much power And it's so important for us to realize this potential and this creative power, this force of words and the tongue that God has given to us so that we use it to speak life to things that need life and to speak death to things that need to die in our lives. And, you know, I know this is sometimes hard to believe that, you know, that there's power of life and death in the tongue, but it's true. And this message is, you know, it's going to be somewhat convicting for all of us including the one talking to you and so I thought to lighten the mood I'd tell you a funny story and because I just like to do that uh, when we're learning something that kind of just is it's kind of a challenge to hear I thought about this couple uh, this married couple and married couples can agree that sometimes we get frustrated with each other you know I don't know if you do but uh, it's it's a fact that uh, we kind of can can have some differences but this husband was concerned about his wife um, losing her hearing <laughs> and so he went to the doc said doc listen you got to help me out because I, I think my wife's losing her hearing and I don't want to offend her don't want to start a fight can you tell me how do I approach this conversation doc says here's what, here's what you do you go home tonight and make sure her back is to you and when you're about 15 feet away make a statement if she can't hear you then move five feet closer say it again again if she doesn't say anything five feet closer that will help us to assess the severity of her hearing, uh, loss of hearing. And so then kind of let me know the report on that, and we'll go from there. So he goes home, and she's in the kitchen. She's chopping vegetables. Her back's to him. He's like, this is perfect, 15 feet away. Honey, what's for dinner tonight? Nothing. So he did what the doctor said, moved five feet closer, says it again. Honey, what's for dinner tonight? Nothing. Moves five more feet. Honey, what's for dinner tonight? Still nothing. So now he's a little flustered, a little frustrated. Gets right up on her and says, Honey, what is for dinner tonight? And she twirls around and says, For the fourth time, vegetable soup. (laughs) (sighs) That's funny. I don't care what you say. (laughs) He's the one that was losing his hearing. (laughs) Hebrews 11 and 3 tells us that by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of the things which are visible. Words are so powerful. God created the heavens and the earth through his word. He framed the worlds with his word. And what we can learn from that is that our worlds also can be framed by our words. That's why we've got to understand the powerful force of words that God has given to us. And, you know, I know there's some teaching out there that's kind of, I think, in my opinion, out of balance and what I think is that we don't go out and just kind of create stuff to say and hope that God gets into alignment with what we're saying. I think, biblically speaking, we understand what God's Word has said. We come into agreement with God's Word. And when we get into agreement with God's Word, we come into alignment with heaven. And that's when His will is done and His power and His promises show up in our lives. And so if we can get our words to line up with God's Word, then we'll see a powerful force of faith released into our life because they do have a powerful force and you know if there's something I want you to get today the big idea is this is that words are connectors everybody say connectors and if you're following along in your outline which I encourage you to do we provided that for you to hopefully you can you can take that with you why do we do that because they say you only retain about 10 percent of what you hear you retain 25 percent of what you hear and write down you retain 50 percent of what you see and hear, you retain 85% of what you hear and share. So that's why we want you to take notes, go share it with your family, and let's just learn uh, these, these powerful truths together. And the first thing you, you can learn about words today is words connect us to God. Words connect us to God. Think about that. Invisible words, invisible words connect us to an invisible God in an invisible world, the spirit world. And it is a connector that allows God to connect with us in the physical world. It is a conduit. It is a a line. It is a connector 
to where God Almighty can release His supernatural power into our natural world so that we see supernatural results. They are connectors. Think about worship. You know, we just had some, some pretty awesome worship, yes? Point 180, don't you love Point 180? We're so blessed every week. Love those guys. They serve and they prepare and they worship. Why do we do that? It's because, not just because we want to sing and have a show before the word. It's because when we worship, we use our words. And when we say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. You're mighty in battle. You love me. You're a conqueror. What you're doing is you are connecting with the very power and spirit of God. And through that word, life and hope and faith and strength and boldness come into our spirits. That's how powerful words are. That's why you need to be a worshiper. Say, I don't feel like worshiping. Well, do you feel like winning? I do. So I've learned to worship even when I don't feel it. Why? Because words are connectors. You know what happens? When I understand my words are connectors, even if my physical man's not feeling it, but my spirit man connects, my spirit man affects my physical man. Why? Because the spiritual can impact the physical. And so many times we're trying to win the battle in the physical when we, we got to understand that we are spiritual spiritual beings we're not physical people trying to have a, phys- a spiritual experience we are spirit beings having a human experience and god who is spirit is in the spirit realm and words are connectors that's why it's important for us to learn how to pray because words connect us to god they connect us to his promise that's why we need to know how to worship and use our words to connect to god think about this words are so powerful when you want to become born again when you want to have the, 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 the miracle of new birth to become a new creation where old things are passed away, all things become new, your eternity is changed through words. Let's go to Romans. Let me show you what I mean. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. It says, in fact, the message is very close at hand. It's on your lips and in your heart. I want you to notice that lips and heart or mouth and heart are so connected. And he says that's the message about faith that we preach first Verse 9 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, look at this, and, I'm sorry, if you, believe, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. So there's this powerful force called words that connects you to God's provision for forgiveness and salvation. It goes on in verse 10, it says, for it's by, by believing in your heart, you're made right with God. And by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Your mouth, your words can change your eternal destiny. That's how powerful words are. Somebody said, well, you know, okay, well, think about it like this. We were born into sin, so we are separated from a holy God. So there's this gap between us and God. And so to fix that, Psalm 107 says that he sent his word and healed them. And it's God's word that connects us back to God. Somebody says, no, it's Jesus that's the connector. He's the bridge. Exactly right. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus Christ is the word of God. And it's the word of God that connects us to restoration and healing and forgiveness to God's grace. is through the word of God. Because words are powerful. They can change everything. They connect us to God. And, you know, not only do they connect us to God for salvation, they connect us to God for his promise, for his, uh, his nature, his character in relationship with God. There are, there are connectors. And what we believe in our heart comes out of our mouth. That's why, that's why I'm telling you, if you can get the heart right, you can get the mouth right. And I want to show you what Jesus taught us about this powerful connector between the mouth and the heart. They are so connected. Look at Matthew 12 with me as Jesus is teaching us here. He says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. And in this illustration, understand that the tree is the heart, the fruit is the words. And he says, a bad tree produces bad fruit, a good tree produces good fruit. A bad tree can't produce good fruit, and, and, and so, in order to get good fruit, we don't try to change the fruit, we change the tree. And the tree is our heart. That's why God wants to give you a new heart with new and right desires. Old things are passed away, all things become new, starting with your heart. It, it, it's because out of our heart flows, as Solomon said, our future. Guard your heart, because it determines the course of your life. 
That's why I tell young people, I tell all people, get your heart right, you'll get your life right. If you take care of this right here, it'll impact your entire world. And so many times we're trying to change things on the external and see as a believer and follower of Jesus Christ, as a son or a daughter of God, as a spiritual uh, son or daughter of God, you've got to realize that our life is lived from the inside out. That, that we live from the inside out. I mean, if we get our heart right, we'll get our life right. If we get our heart right, we get our words right. You get your words right, you, you get your world right. Why? Because our world is framed by our words. That's powerful stuff, amen? And so he said, eh, make, make, the, make the tree good. And so maybe today you're here and you need a new heart. Uh, or maybe, maybe even as a believer, you know, you do get that new heart. But then if you're not guarding your heart, as the Bible tells us, you will go through trials, you'll go through situations where maybe bitterness gets in. And the Bible talks about dealing with bitterness because it'll, it'll grow a root and, and it will spring forth and defile things in your life. And that word defile means it'll just mess it up. Or maybe there's offense in your life. Or maybe there's anger or frustration. And maybe you need healing in your heart. And so know that, that the words are always an indicator and a revealer of the heart. Look at what Jesus said in the next verse. He said, verse 34b, For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. So if we get the heart right, we can get the words right. And so maybe you need a new heart today. Maybe you, you need to be born again, uh, the miracle of new birth. We're going to have a prayer at the end of this service. You can experience that, and it's the greatest miracle ever. God will take your old, stone, old stony heart and give you a brand new heart that's, that will respond, that will obey, that will follow God. He will come to dwell in you. He'll even give you the power to trust him and follow him. That's a powerful, powerful, powerful miracle. Or maybe you're a believer today, and, and maybe, maybe there's some negativity. I know in my own life, if I, if I start you know, getting frustrated or if I notice a lot of sarcasm or uh, just impatience, I realize, you know what? I've got to go back before the Lord and say, Father, renew a right spirit in me because something is off in my life. Lord, is there something I've done? Is there an attitude? Is there something that I need to adjust? And it's amazing. Every time he shows me and I repent of it and he heals me, it's like a brand new start. And all of a sudden... I've got my words right. So we get our heart right, we get our words right. Jesus said, the next verse, here's why, why is that important, Mike? What's up with that? Look at verse 36. This is a strong word. But I say to you, for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you'll be justified, and by your words you'll be condemned. Not by your heart, not by your intentions, not what you were going to do, but by the words that you speak. Words are so powerful, but they're so valuable, God is recording every single one of them. <laughs> and, and when we think about the magnitude of words we speak in a lifetime, just to kind of put it in perspective, I read a, uh, one report this week that said the average person speaks 11 million words a year. Some of you know people that speak that much in a month. <laughs> you know? And, and that's not a bad thing. Some of you talk a lot. Some, some of us are, are headline people. Some of us are details. You know, I'm just headlines. Give me the headlines. Just give me the bottom line. But some people are details people. Either way, 11 million a year. At the age of 65 in a lifetime, that's 715 million words. And I thought, what about what a, a powerful opportunity? Could you imagine if we could just speak 715 million words of life into our own world and to those around us? Don't you think we would experience the abundant life that God promised to us through Jesus Christ? Amen. But have you ever thought, how, how is that so? How does, God, how does God remember all those words? How does God record? Somebody said an angel records the word. I, I don't know. I don't think an angel could keep up with some of us, right? He's like, hold on a second. Could you repeat that last statement? Because we talk. We just do. But I, here's what I think. I think God, his brain is so infinite that he can remember every single word of every single person. I mean, think about that. Seven billion people on the planet times 750. That's how awesome and infinite almighty everlasting God is. Why do you think that? Here's why I think God remembers he has the ability to remember. That's just how awesome he is. It's because when we, when we come to him, one of the promises he says to us is that when you are born again, when you do become brand new, I will remember your sins no more. Aren't you glad today 
that even though we've blown it, there's a delete button because of God's grace. Amen. And, you know, he, he doesn't just not remember them. He causes them to cease to exist. All things are new. But let that encourage us to, to not just because of grace, sin all the more. Let's make sure that we are a people because we are people who want life or people who give life. And I think that what you sow, you reap. And so we're going to all reach together, including the one talking to you, to make sure we're speaking life. Because the first way that we can connect to God is through words. Words connect us to God. Here's the second thing words connect us to in your notes. Words connect us to people. Let's go back to Proverbs. In verse 20, 21, I want to read verse 22 because I think they are connected on purpose. I don't think it was an accident. I don't think Solomon was having an ADD moment. He just said this random thought. Look at verse 21 again. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Verse 22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. And see, wives are, are intended and created by God to bring favor into our life. Why do you think that was right up underneath verse 20 and 21? I think it's because God wanted us to show us the power of words. They connect us to God, but they also connect us to people. If you've been married, uh, my, wife, my, my wife and I got married. We walked down an altar and before witnesses and before God, and we made a covenant to God, and we made a covenant together, and, we, and through words we said, I do till death do us part. And my words connected me to my spouse. And the Bible says the two become one. And there was a supernatural miracle that took place. And our, but it was our words that connected us to each other. And see, words connect us to each other. But you know what? Words are also disconnectors. You ever had a fallout with somebody? Words were involved, weren't they? They sure were. Somebody says, not all the time. Well, maybe if you're on the road, there were hand gestures involved, but <laughs> if you're in a relationship, words were involved. There was a disconnect through words. Words are connectors, but they're also disconnectors. And, and what I've learned is that if I want a good marriage, I can create a good marriage with my mouth in the things I say, because words are powerful. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 25 says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her or set her apart, having cleansed her by the washing of the water with the word. And so if you're a son or a daughter, believer, follower of Christ, you're, you're a son or a daughter, but you're also part of the body. Another reference is the bride of Christ. And so he washes us gently with the word and cleanses us. And so husbands, that's, this is a way that we can love our wives is by the way that we speak to them and the way that we, we speak to them is an indicator of washing with the water by the word. And why do you think God put that in there? It's because he created and wired men, and he knows our tendencies. And sometimes, guys, we can be a little harsh with our wives, including the one talking to you. And that's why we've got to make sure we go back to the Word of God, get our, get our heart right, so that we can make sure that we're not pressure washing our wives instead of washing our wives. You know, pressure washing with the black tip. <laughs> So guys, let's, let's get back to where we need to be and let's make sure we're washing, washing gently with our words. Ladies, wives, listen, you also, uh, you, you got to make sure that you are encouraging your husband. Speak life over him. Speak life over him. If you're always telling him he makes bad decisions and he should have listened to you and you don't do anything right, that, that is not going to benefit your marriage. You speak life. They said, you know, one guy said it like this. Inside of every man, there's a king and a fool. And whichever one you speak to is the one that will have life. Because your words have life. It's like that couple and that lady said to him all the time, you always make bad mistakes. You don't know how to lead our family. You make mistakes. I, you should have done it this way. You, you, never, you, don't know, do, you don't do anything right. You always make mistakes. And then one day he's looking through their wedding album. And he thinks, you know what? I always do make mistakes. 
speak to the king, speak life. They said inside of every woman there's a queen and the B word. <laughs> inside of a woman, it's been said, now I don't know. There's a queen and a brat. What B word did you think I was talking about? We're in church, man. Inside of every woman, there's a queen and a brat in whichever one you speak to. So husbands and wives, let's speak to the king. Let's speak to the queen because our words have life. Amen. Let, let's, let's, let's create a life-giving marriage because we get frustrated. We do. We get impatient. We, we do. And sometimes we forget. And sometimes we're nicer to strangers than we are our own spouses. In church, that, ought, that shouldn't be so. Amen. And, and again, I know it's a convicting, but conviction is not a bad thing. Conviction leads us to the way of life. Conviction leads us to healing. Conviction leads us to restoration. Amen. And so let, let's, let's, let's speak. Let's speak life. Philippians 4.8. If I want to fix my words... You know what I can do is I can go to Philippians 4, 8. Look, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Talked to you last week about meditation. Meditation means to think on continually, uh, to, to continue to recall it. And if we want to fix our words, we fix our thoughts. Why? Because thoughts... I'm, I'm sorry, words are expressed thoughts. If I get my thinking right, I get my words right. And if I dwell on the good things, because so many times we dwell on where we missed it instead of where we made it. We focus on how far we got to go instead of focusing on how far we've come. We focus on where people have missed it instead of where they've made it. And so I'm just saying, you know what, wives, let's encourage our husbands. And, and so uh, husbands, let's, let, let's, let's be gentle in the way that we handle Handle our wives because it will, bring, it will bring life. Meditate on the good things. You say, well, I can't find anything good my husband does. You, there's something. <laughs> you, you, you might have to say, honey, you, you get up every day. I, you just, I, I love that about you. You get up every day. <laughs> or honey, thank you that I, I, you know what? I never have to worry about changing the channels. You are such a load lifter. Thank you. Thank you. But, you know, start just, and, and ladies, make sure that you're, 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 you're talking about his good qualities. Don't, don't throw him under the bus in front of people. Don't, don't do that. Lift him up. And I promise you, we will rise up to the image that is laid out to us. That's why at Turning Point, we speak to people. We don't tell it like it is. We tell it how it can be. And we want to speak to your potential because I believe we will rise up to our potential when we speak life. Amen? Give life. And in your notes, this is just a little freebie. Build each other up. Don't beat each other up. Remember, we're on the same team. Amen? And this is true for the way we speak to our spouse, but also the way we speak to our children. Whether we speak to our children or coworkers or classmates, teachers, employees, employers. You know, employers, listen, just because somebody works for you doesn't mean you can talk to them any way that you want to. Because it's a fact. If people like you, they will perform better for you. And if they're happy, they'll be more fruitful. So speak life over them. I'm not saying don't make adjustments and say this is where we need to improve. I'm not saying just let the waves wash over you, but speak life. Speak to people's potential. Amen? Even with our children. You know, I think uh, there's so many areas as a dad that I could get better at because there are no perfect dads. But I think one area that I've been pretty consistent at, and this is this area of speaking life over my kids. And, and so, dads, let's make sure, moms, let's make sure we're speaking life over our children because they will frustrate you. Thank you for that. They will. It's like, I thought I had this whip, and it's like, ah, it never ends. And so, be encouraged and speak life over them. See the big picture and, and speak, speak, speak life over them. And so, one of the things I do, maybe you want to, do this is when I pray over them every night it, it, it might be tw 20 seconds but I'll say something like God thank you so much for my awesome son thank you for giving me such an awesome daughter Lord I thank you that they're called by you they're loved they're blessed and I just speak that over them and I'll tell them hey you're blessed you're the head not the tail you're the top not the bottom you're above and not beneath just remember you're chosen you're blessed you're God's kid see parents it's not our job to tell them what they are to become 
It's not our job to shape them into our image and what we want for their life. It's our job to recognize who God's called them to be and to help them to be conformed to his image and teach them to be sons and daughters. Because if they learn how to be sons and daughters, then they're going to know how to relate to God. And they're going to be secure, and then they can become good mothers and fathers. See, I'm convinced until we learn how to be sons and daughters, we can't ultimately be the fathers and mothers that God wants us to be. And so let them know that they are, they are your children no matter what. You love them no matter what, and you're speaking life. And I think it brings this freedom for them to rise up because it's powerful, parents, what we say to our children. It reminds me of a college professor who was vacationing in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and he, he was a college professor at a seminary, and he wanted to be alone, and they went to breakfast, and there was this white-haired, distinguished gentleman going around to different tables, and he leans over to his wife and says, I hope he doesn't come over here. And sure enough, here he comes. Hey, how are you folks doing? Where are you from? The guy says, I'm from Oklahoma. Well, welcome to Tennessee. Uh, what do you do for a living? He says, well, I teach at a, a seminary. Oh, so you teach preachers how to preach. He goes, yeah. He goes, well, let me tell you a story, uh, a preacher's story that I think you'll enjoy. And he thought to himself, great, that's what I need is another preacher's story. So the guy sits down. He says, you see, see that mountain over there? He says, just at the foot of that mountain, there was a little boy who was born to an unwed mother. And as the boy grew up in the town, everywhere he went, the town people would stop him and say, hey, son, who's your daddy? He never could answer him, and it began to really uh, cause shame in his life, and it hurt him deeply, and it was very painful, so he would avoid people. At recess, he would just kind of retreat, or at lunch, he stayed away from people, because everywhere he went, it was that same question, hey, who's your daddy? And so he would go to church, and every week at church, while the pastor was giving the benediction, he would slip out, because he didn't want to be stopped by church people saying, hey, who's your daddy? Well, the church got a new pastor, and on one Sunday, the new pastor said the benediction so quick that the child couldn't get out the door. He's 12 years old. He's trying to get out. He's really scared, and the pastor puts his hand on his shoulder on the way out the door and says, Son, who's your daddy? And all the church people got quiet. All eyeballs were right in there because everybody wanted to know and hear who this child's father was. And the pastor, discerning by the Holy Spirit, the, the moment, says, Oh, wait a second. Now I recognize the family resemblance. You're a child of God. Son, go and claim your inheritance. You're a child of God. And for the first time in a long time, the boy smiled, and he left. And that, from that point on, anytime somebody said, who's your daddy? He says, I'm a child of God. And so the man at the table says, wasn't that a great story? Stood up and left, and the college professor was like, yeah, that was a great story. Who is this guy? And so he's leaving, and he says to the waitress, hey, do you know who that guy was? She says, oh, everybody knows who that is. She says, that's, that's Ben Hooper, the former governor of Tennessee. And as he turned around, he says, you know what? If that new pastor hadn't have told me that day who I was, I don't know what I would have become. And can I tell you, there's power in words. So let's make sure we're speaking life. Let's speak life. And today, as we wrap up our time together, We've all messed up in this area, all of us, including the one talking to you. And there are times when I've been harsh. Just the other day, I, I, I was, Charlotte asked me about a purchase on something, and I kind of got heated. You know, I don't know if you guys are like that. And my tone just kind of went up. You know what I'm saying? I went to this defensive case of why we just, it wasn't in the budget spending plan, and, and she walked away, and the Holy Spirit just said, that was a little over the top, wasn't it? I don't know how God talks to you, but that's how he talks to me. <laughs> And I just felt really bad. And I went to the room, and I said, Honey, I'm sorry. That was, that was, a very, that was just harsh. I'm sorry. I, I apologize. Please forgive me. We're still not buying it, but please forgive me. <laughs> you didn't deserve that. And can I tell you, there are seven divine words to heal any relationship. And it's this. I was wrong. Will you forgive me? I was wrong. Will you forgive me? You know, sticks and stones may break our bones, but words have the power to give life and death. So let's make sure we speak life. I want to show you this last video. Again, I just I love how science is kind of confirming what God's word has already said. I want you to see this, this experiment that they've discovered based on words and water. And I'll come back and we'll pray. Watch this.
Did you know that your words can actually change the shape and makeup of a water molecule? I want you to watch this picture because I'm going to say some words and show you what these words do to water. When you say love, water looks like this. When you say gratitude, water looks like this. When you say thank you, water looks like this. But when you say you disgust me, water looks like this. When you say fool, water looks like this. When you say evil, water looks like this. So here's my question to you. If your body is two thirds water, which it is, would you rather your body to look and feel like these pictures? Or would you rather your body to look and feel like these pictures? You know, the Bible says that we should not speak anything except that which edifies, that's positive. Your words have so much impact on the people you speak to and to yourself. So here's my encouragement to you. Speak life into someone today. Say thank you. Say you're wonderful. Say you're beautiful. Say I love you. And speak life and health into people because your words actually do make a difference. Words are connectors or they're disconnectors. And I just want you to bow your head with me as we end our time together today. And I just want you to ask yourself, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you through this message? What is God saying to you right now? And I want to encourage you, it's never too late to repair a relationship. That's with God or with people. It's never too late. And so right now in this final few moments on this Memorial Day weekend, maybe, maybe you're here and you know that you, you need to get right with God. I don't know, maybe you've been frustrated with God. Maybe you've doubted God. Maybe you've been angry. I don't know. Here's what I know. God loves you unconditionally. and His word concerning you has never changed. He loves you. He gave his son Jesus so that he could be reconciled with you. He's made the first move to bring you back to him. And he says, here's all you got to do. Just come into agreement with my word that you need me, that you've fallen short, and only I can save you. And I'll do it right here. I'll, if you confess, I'll save you. Or maybe you're here today and you've been away from the Lord and maybe you had a relationship at one time and just things got in the way. Maybe there was some bitterness or an offense. Somebody, I don't know. But maybe today is the day that through your words, you reconnect with God where you can be restored. Or maybe there's a relationship that you need to have today. Have that relationship. Because tomorrow's not promised to you. Today is all we have. Today's the day of salvation. Now is your time. This is your moment to seize your divine opportunity. I'd love to pray with you. I'm going to pray a prayer right now. Just kind of lead you in that Romans 10 prayer. If you'd like to be included in that prayer, you want to pray right where you're at. And you say, that's me, Mike. I want to be included in that prayer today. I want to reconnect with God. I want to connect with God. I need a fresh start. That's me. With nobody looking around, every head bowed and other believers praying. If that's you, would you just lift your hand and say, that's me, Mike. Thank you for your boldness. Awesome. Yeah, I see your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it up. I want to see it. Yeah, say, that's me. Yeah, good job right here in the front. Over here to the left. God bless you. In the back. Yeah, I see you. Thank you, God. Put your hands down. Now, through our words, we're going to connect to God's provision and promise of forgiveness, new birth, and salvation. Say this with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for living life my own way. I surrender to you. I bow my knee. And I declare, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for saving me. Fill me with your spirit. And plant me in your house. So I can fulfill my purpose. And bring you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen.